Welcome Transformers fans, my name is Composite Energy, and today I will be bringing you my review of the Transformers Age of Extinction Voyager class Optimus Prime. And here he is in his alt mode. Well, uh, yeah, I might as well just say it as well, uh, say it. The official name of this figure is called the Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. Yeah, but... What's uh, this is a neat little figure, and I think the main reason for that why why this figure is actually pretty interesting is that this is Movie Optimus Prime in a Generation One style alt mode. Yeah, this is heavily based on what I could gather. This is either exactly or really heavily based on the G One uh, version of the uh, the Generation One Optimus Prime's truck which was a Freightliner 1986 cab over semi-truck. That's what this is. Looked it up. Best I could gather, this is what it was heavily based on. And, and honestly, I, I saw one image that had the white stripe and everything, and, I'm, and, it, and it was identical. That's what this is, a Freightliner 1986 cab over truck semi. Or cab over semi-truck. Well, that's uh, besides the point. So, here it is. And it's a really nice... Really nice alt mode. Like I said, when I was looking for uh, images of the uh, actual vehicle, I was astounded by how accurate this thing actually is. Also, if you noticed, the shiny bits, that's chrome. Yeah, this, is, this isn't just the uh, regular version of the uh, Voyager Optimus. This is more, even more specifically the uh, Platinum Edition version. Well, now, there, there was two Platinum Editions. This Platinum Edition was the one that came in a two-pack with this Optimus and one other character, which I will be reviewing very soon. So, stay tuned for that. So, here he is in his alt mode. Really nice detailing. Check it out. Like I said, if you look up images for the uh, 86 Freightliner, it, it's identical. It is, like, it is scary, scarily identical. Little smoke stack here. And yeah, and uh, before I keep going, I might as well show you his uh, accessories, or in any case, it's this weapon, this gun, which, it's a pretty nice little cannon. I don't know if this is, this isn't exactly what was in the movie, but it's a nifty little cannon, and it's also a spring loader. You pull this back and fires this projectile, so I'm going to put that in there, and there's actually two different ways of storing it on the uh, vehicle mode. At least how I like to do it, I have this little peg here, and this port, put it there. Then you have them just uh, carrying it along, carrying it along. It is not, let me adjust the camera, it's not the greatest thing, but it's certainly a lot better than the other way you can store it. You can take this off, take this peg, and well, you can also do it like this. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's acceptable. I guess, but even that and the other way are still better than just plopping this thing on top, just doing that. Funny enough that in the same line you had two Voyagers <laughs> that had the same way of storing their weapons, This uh, the, the Galvatron being the other one. So let's take this off, it's, uh, it, it's something, but it's kind of ridiculous. But um, oh, one cool thing I found out about this weapon is that if you look at the back, because Optimus actually holds it from here, yet this is supposed to be the handle of the gun. Or at least like an extended handle. So, it's either a stock or an extended handle, but that's besides the point. If you notice carefully, there's these notches back here. And you're probably wondering what this is for. It's not for this figure. This is actually a way for... This is actually meant to be compatible with... The Transformers Dark of the Moon Voyager class Megatron. Yeah, the Dark of the Moon Megatron can use these notches in order to hold this gun to replicate the shotgun that he had. In fact, now that I look carefully at it, this looks a lot closer to, the, to that shotgun that he used, that Megatron used in Dark of the Moon. So, that's pretty neat. You can, this, this, guy, the, this Optimus can also be considered a, a, some kind of an expansion to, um, to that uh, Megatron. So if you happen to have it, just know that this thing is compatible with that Megatron. So, pushing that aside, let's get on to his transformation. First, you put down the smokestacks. Very important. Pull that apart. Bend these. 
Oh, and trust me, you may not see a lot of chrome here. You can probably see here there's a lot of chrome on this figure. You can see it in robot mode. Come down here and you take it from back here. Turn this up. Adjust it. Turn this. Adjust it. And do I straight? No, not yet. Not straighten yet. And then comes probably one of the more annoying parts. Especially when you have the transfer back. You lift this up here. And you... Mm. I always found this part annoying. Excuse me. Gotta get your nail in there to separate this a bit. Your nail in there. Yeah, you have to get your nail in there. I couldn't find, can see any other way to lift this up, which will also pull up the head. But you need to like finagle this around to get the clearance necessary. To there we go. Separate this forward. Now from here you get to really annoyingly have to lift this up. Oh. How was this? You have to like move this like at the same time. So there we go. Slide that down. Lift this and then at the same time move this out. Same thing here while moving, like while moving and turning. Better yet, yeah, there we go. You can then turn this. Well it like this is this is really a pain and like I think the biggest flaw is that I felt they could have made this a little bit smoother of a uh, transformation. But once you get that nasty step out of the way, it's all pretty much smooth sailing. Now, with this, like that, you come down here, bend this down, and then you basically fold this up, take that separate, fold, well, well you can't really see it, you guys pretty tall, you fold this up, Turn this back part, turn that down, fold this down, get the arms adjusted, arms adjusted, he's, he's a very tall figure, you get this forward, like that, get that forward, like that, come back here, fold this assembly up, oh and make sure that this piece is fold up so you get these little stacks. And then, have it there, then you'll see these little pegs, ports, you connect these pegs to here, that'll keep it in place, the same on the other side, and then you close up the chest, and there we have them, there we have this really, really nice Optimus Prime. In his voice, in his uh, robot mode, really cool. And just to get it out of the way first, the ch the whole way of transforming the cab, uh, potentially putting the arms in when they're supposed to go, is the most annoying and frustrating part of this figure. Had they found a better way of trans of of of, do of working that, he'd be great. Also, you can check out all this shiny chrome. That is nice. That is um the that is the first of the two changes they made between the regular retail and the platinum edition version. The second change is that if you look at his face, it's the battle mask version. Yeah, he has his battle mask up. The standard version just has his battle mask uh, put away and you see his mouth. So yeah, really cool. That this is the uh, the version. In fact, unless you want unless you want to pay uh, what is it through the nose and get the one that's like a. Uh, what was it called? The rusty version or the battle damage version, which are much more expensive, but they look really run down. They're more movie accurate, but unless you want that one, I highly recommend you get the, uh, I highly recommend this platinum edition version because of all the shiny, shiny chrome. Whoops. My camera's, camera got uh, all hot and bothered because of the uh, chrome. It was, it was blinded by the beauty. And the other, I said, the other cool thing is that this is a really nice head. Really nice head sculpt for this, uh, for Optimus. That is really nice. And yeah, pretty much the cool thing about this figure is that it is, it is pretty much movie, like movie 1, 2, and 3 Optimus. But in both G1 Optimus colors and an, a G1 and a Generation 1 uh, alt mode. 
which was that Freightliner. So yeah, that is just impressive how they were able to do that. And not only that, it's a solid figure. This is a really nice figure. Let me show you the posability. Posability can go that far. He swivels. Can also rotate like that. Bend that far. That far back. The hand is kind of a pain, but it does... You can rotate that a bit. Can do really nice kick. Really good knee bend. Wide range of motion on the feet. And funny enough, no ball joints. That kind of surprising. No ball joints on this guy. And he has a lot of a lot of range, a huge range of motion. And even has ankle pivot. Switch there. Even a waist. Like this is a solid figure. Like wow. And it's one of those that you're not really expecting. This is another one. This is another figure I find that you're not expecting it to be such a really good figure, but it is. I guess Optimus has a way with that. I'm just popping up with really good figures. Uh, I guess one one tiny complaint is that when you move the arms this far, it looks weird. So try and have the arms like this. And like that. Like you can't really... The, you can't really bend it that way, which is kind of a shame. It only bends here. That's like one tiny... That's like the one really flaw I can find on this figure. Other than that, this is a very, very solid figure. And here comes his uh, weapon. Would you just... Hold it, whoops, premature firing there. Uh, 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 come on, stop shooting everything. There we go. So, he has his, uh, he has his weapon. Eh, his gun there. So yeah, let's get him in a, let's get him in a cool pose. So yeah, there, I have nothing else to say. I highly recommend this figure. It's one of those, it just, here's the weird part. This figure is better than the um, the leader version that is, at least from my, my opinion, I didn't really like the Age of Extinction leader class Optimus. I didn't like it. For being a leader class, it was way too bulky. They could, they should have done much better with that. And funny enough, for the last night, they actually did release a Knight Optimus, that version of Optimus, in a, better, in a much better way as a Voyager. So why couldn't they do that with the like the Voyager was superior to the leader class? What's wrong with that? Oh, one tiny thing, these 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 panels here can also move. But yeah. Why is it that the Voyagers are better than the leader class? I think the last great it feels like that the one fan great leader class Optimus was the one from Revenge of the Fallen, and they just kept reusing that one, and that's the best one. So yeah. I really like this figure. This is this is a really nice figure. And if you're able to get the platinum version, it's even better because it has the battle mask and all the shiny chrome, which is awesome. So yeah, a little more back. He's, he's pretty tall too. So yeah, this has been my review of the Transformers, Age of Extinction, Voyager class Optimus or Evasion Mode Optimus if you want to call it. I don't. I think that that name's kind of silly. I get why they did it, but it's kind of silly. There, there was because there was only one Voyager Optimus in that line, which was him. I would have understood it if, if, like, if we had, like, a knight version, like, his upgraded version, which we then got in the last night uh, toy line, but th that's besides the point. So, yeah, this has been um, Voyager Optimus from Age of Extinction. I am Composite Energo. I highly recommend this figure, and I am signing off. Peace out.